Hi, and welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today I'm going to show you how to connect your Sony television or Blu-ray player to your Wi-Fi network, and what to do when they don't necessarily want to talk to each other. Step 1. Turn on your TV. If the device that you're trying to connect is your Blu-ray player, turn that on too and tune the TV to the appropriate input. Now, using the remote that came with the device that you're trying to connect, go into its menu. Now navigate to Settings, uh, which is usually accompanied by the image of a small toolbox. From there, locate and select Network, and then Network Setup, and then set up Network Connection. Select Custom, select Wireless Setup, Scan, and then wait while your television or Blu-ray player scans for and locates all the wireless networks that it can find in range. Select your wireless network from the list. Assuming your network is secured, select WPA key and then enter your key on the next screen. If your network is not secured, then you should be able to skip this step, but you should be securing your network. Under IP settings, select Auto. You're most likely not running a proxy server, so select No to this. Now push right to continue. Save and connect. And at this point, 90% of you are done. For most of you, after one or two minutes of displaying this screen, the television or Blu-ray player will come back with a new status screen, basically saying that everything went fine. And you can exit out of that, and you're good to go. However, I happen to know that in this case, it is going to fail. The simple fact is that Wi-Fi is quirky, and it seems that certain devices just don't like certain brands of routers. It's not even a knock against the device or the router necessarily, it just seems to be the way it is. Sony televisions, in my experience, don't like Netgear routers. Um, Mitsubishi televisions don't seem to like Buffalo routers, just to cite another example. Thankfully, when these situations come up, you can almost always get it to work by manually configuring the IP settings. So that's what I'll show you how to do now. The first thing we need to do to manually configure our IP settings is to find out what the IP address of our router is. To do this, we need to go to our computer. The method is the same in Windows 7 and Windows Vista. Open your start menu and in the search bar, type CMD. Then select CMD from the list and the command prompt window will open. In Windows XP and older, select Run from the Start menu and type CMD in the box that appears after that for the same result. If you're running a Debian-based Linux, just open up any old terminal window. In the Windows command prompt, type IPconfig, or in Linux, type IFconfig. Hit enter and you'll be presented with a whole lot of IP information, most of which you don't need. We're just looking for one thing, default gateway. This is the IP address of your router. Write it down, including the dots, and then we're done with the computer, you can close this window and go back to your television. Select repeat network setup. Select wireless setup again, scan. Select your network from the list again. The WPA key information will still be set from our last failed attempt. And here's where we start to change. Under IP address settings, select Manual. And then you'll come to a screen like this. Much of the information will be left blank, or zeros in this case, and what is filled out is largely wrong. I'm going to start by wiping that info out to avoid confusion. Now I'm going to explain to you how to fill this out. For IP address, set the first three groups of numbers to be identical to those of your router. In this instance, our router's IP address is 192.168.1.1. So we're going to set these first three groups of numbers to be 192.168.1. The last group of numbers can technically be anything from 2 to 255. Normally, your router just assigns a device the next available number on the list, but that's part of what's not working here, so we have to do this part ourselves. 
I suggest randomly picking a number between 100 and 255. By starting so high up, it's highly unlikely that you're going to conflict with anything else on the network. Just remember that if you're setting up more than one device this way on the network, don't pick the same number for more than one of those devices. Moving on, set subnet mask as 255.255.255.0. Set default gateway to be exactly identical to your router's IP. In this case, once again, that's 192.168.1.1. I pretty much always use Google DNS for these things. It's the easiest one to remember and the easiest one to enter. Set the primary DNS as 8.8.8.8. .8 Set the secondary DNS as 8.8.4.4. .4. Once again, set proxy server to no. Move on. Save and connect. Only this time we'll be successful. I'm just going to skip ahead to the end now. And now we see the happy confirmation screen that we should have seen the first time around. Now you can quit network setup. And we're done. As always, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you find it useful. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on General Nerdery.